Hello and welcome to the update 48.4 raid item review. I'm your host Trim Tom and today we're going to be reviewing all of the items that come from the new raid called the Dryad and the Stranger. I think that's what it's called. Anyway, it's the raid for Feywild. So we're going to take a look at all the items, rate them comparatively, how they would fit, how cool they are, and hopefully everything will make the list. Um... If you're curious about this, uh, I'll put a link to the preview thread if you can look at any of the items if you want to get a closer look at each individual item. Without further ado, let's get started. So first, we have the Icon of the Bitter Wind. This is a trinket that is coming out of the raid. Um, it is part of the Eminence of Winter set, so it's a new winter trinket. It has Superior Heroism, Intimidate, Insightful Intimidate, and Insight 193. Superior Heroism is like regular heroism or greater heroism, but it's plus five. So it's an extra plus one to stats. Is this going to be good? I'm not sure. It's a winter item for a trinket, which is probably pretty good for a lot of tanks. And on top of that, it also has the ability to use um, Intimidate and Insightful Intimidate on one item. So again, it's probably going to be pretty good. Maybe the Dryad and the Demigod. As far as how this item is going to fit into a lot of tank builds. If you're not a tank, you don't want this item. And I don't play a lot of tanks, so tank gearing is a little outside of my pay grade. I'm going to say, overall, it's pretty interesting. Um, and I think it's going to be valuable to a lot of people, but not for me. Next is the Rune Lodestone. Another winter item, but this is a necklace here instead. And it gives uh, Pierce Cold Iron, which works on all your weapons. It gives Spell Save 17, which is just a very useful stat. It gives Eversight, making you immune to blindness and giving you true seeing. And Sight Beyond Sight, uh, giving you a 5% bonus to dodge bypass. Now, this item is very interesting. It's winter, and it's a necklace. This is, and it's also geared towards um, physical damage characters. Honestly, it is very, very hard to say whether this will be good um it's almost impossible to really say whether it's going to be good or not um i think it's probably not going to be used by most people especially considering unless uh the um part of the family set gets dethroned uh, this is a necklace and that's going to take up the part of the family necklace items which are the most stat efficient items in the game so you're probably not going to see anybody use this item but it is very interesting we have never had a dodge bypass item added to the game so maybe at some point this could be important, and who knows, maybe even there's monsters in the raid that have dodge that you need dodge bypass for. Next is the item here, Esper the Shadow Blade. So this is a physical shadow blade of the, or physical version of the Shadow Blade spell that exists in game. Um, you can cast the Shadow Blade spell from the Fade Arc Illusionist Tree, and if you get all the way to level cap, you will be uh, short of a weapon because while your weapon will be powerful, it won't accept sentience. This is a physical version that allows you to accept sentience. So therefore, it says, the manifestation of illusion magic is made real by your touch and something else. As the shadow blade is not physical, monks may use it without becoming uncentered, so it's automatically a centered weapon. And you'll notice it is charisma to hit and damage, not strength or dexterity, meaning it's generally designed to go with charisma characters, although you can get around that. It also does evil and force damage. I don't know if the evil implication changes the damage type and ruins the force, but we'll see. However, on equip and inspection, you can see it is a very cool weapon, um, having a really neat visual. I wish I could jump the camera up a little bit, but again, it's got a very uh, very unique design, that kind of ball there, again, looking just like the regular Shadow Blade that you can get as a weapon. Next, we have Staff of the Summer Solstice. Oh yeah, I didn't even talk about whether you should use it or not. This weapon, if you are playing a Shadow Blade character, is going to be very good. If you're not playing a character using Shadow Blades to level, this is probably not going to line up that well. It's a really powerful endgame weapon, having constricting nightmares, reducing physical resistance rating and magical resistance rating by 10 on enemies, as well as Sovereign Nightmares, which instant kills monsters under 5k life. So generally a very powerful weapon, but it is a short sword, which is not a great weapon type. So again, if you're planning on using Shadow Blades, this character is going to fit well for you, this item. Um, and there are going to be some cool builds coming out of this, possibly some uh, Tempest builds uh, using Esper. But overall, I don't think you're going to get too much value uh, out of this over another weapon. Um, but again, sh Shadow Blades are good, so it's hard to tell. Kind of go back and forth on that. Anyway, so next is Staff of the Summer Solstice. This is a new caster staff. Um, this one is pretty interesting because it has Titania's Warmth, which is your attacks and offensive spells of a chance to grant 1,000 temporary hit points on a one-minute cooldown. Very cool. Purifying Flame for fire and light spell power. And crit. 
And on top of that, Sacred Spell Focus, plus two Sacred Bonus to all DCs. And Summer's Inheritance, the Heat of Summer surrounds you, plus 20% Enhancement Bonus to Critical Damage with Fire Spells. This is one of the first Spell Critical Damage weapons. This is going to be the highest Spell Critical Damage weapon uh, or effect, really, in the game you can get for Fire Spells. It is an all-new effect. On top of that, it also looks like this. It is a stick. Literally a stick. Um, but it's got a cool glow on it. It's got these, like, colors near the top. So very, very interesting-looking weapon. It does also feel very summery. Um, it makes me sad that this isn't a summer item. It would be cool if this was part of the summer set, because it's literally called the Summer Solstice, which is the name of the summer set, I believe, or uh, Summer's Eminence. So, either way, I think it could be interesting, but it is not part of the summer set. Is this item going to be that good? It's hard to. It's a hard sell. Staffs take up two item slots, and uh, this item effect with the uh, 1,000 temporary HP is very useful, but it means you don't get an offhand. So... Very hard sell. Could be good if you're willing to give up that offhand. A lot of characters are using the offhands to get the um, Heart of the Prince, which is a offhand orb that adds the winter set on. So, again, it's going to be a hard sell. But if you wanted to use the staff, very useful for adding up fire damage, and it could fit into a bunch of builds. Next, we have the Eidolon of the Shadow Greatsword. It is just like the short sword, but a greatsword. Remember I said the short sword is, like, kind of good? Where you're like, man... Maybe I'll use that. Well, this greatsword is insane, super duper, ultra good. Um, the reason why is because two-handed fighting is very good. While with this patch coming out, two-handed fighting is being reduced by about 6% overall in damage. It's still going to be really, really good. And presumably this weapon looks pretty rad. Let's see how it looks. Oh, yeah. Big-ass two-handed sword made of force damage. It's got that purple whoosh. This is a good-looking weapon. This is a great cosmetic. I am a big fan Great job, SSG, with this one. It just fits. It's so good. If you have a purple cosmetic, got that force damage going. I also am very curious to see how this would look with some of the other item effects on top of it, but I didn't plan to do that in this video, so I'm not doing that. Overall, fantastic weapon. If you're playing any type of Charisma Paladin, not only is this item good, this actually saves you all of your points in the uh, Charisma to Hit and Damage section of the tree for the Fey Wild uh, or the Fey Dark Illusionist. So you can actually save all of those enhancement points and just use this weapon instead. Very, very strong. Uh, the, obviously, Tale of Sulamades and some of the other weapons that are very powerful right now are going to be hard to choose away from, but this is a great option as well to save you seven enhancement points, which is a lot. Next item we're going to look at is called Fire or Fear Eater. It has no description in the patch, so I'm just going to read it off to you off the website. Uh, Fear Eater is that Sovereign Nightmare's effect. For If a monster is under 5,000 hit points, uh, they die. This is extremely powerful. Uh, yeah, God Tier Augment. Um, everyone's going to run on one run of these. Very, very useful, especially if you're playing in high Reaper content. Really, really, really good Augment. Next is the Bitter Edge. Um, and honestly, there's nothing that really competes with Augment. It's kind of amazing. The Bitter Edge is a one-handed sword, a bastard sword. And on top of that, it is pretty strong. It's got a uh, plus 7W from Keen 5, giving plus 2W on its uh, range. And on top of that, it's got Icy Blast, Frostbite. So it actually applies vulnerability stacks, which is kind of cool. And it has Royalty's Frigid Response, which gives you a chance to freeze monsters. This weapon is probably going to be one of the better Bastard Swords in the game, as between this and Constellation, it's pretty much a wash. Um, this one is probably going to hit a little bit harder on the base end, as well as the freezing effect. However, um, you do get the cursing effect from Constellation, so it's hard to say which one is the absolute best one, but the Bitter Edge, assuming the raid isn't impossible, is probably going to be easier to acquire. However, how does it look? Oh, it's too short. It's so good, it's just a little too short. It's like a it's like a long sword basically. I like the sword, but it's just it's a little short. I was expecting a bigger sword. <laughs> Gonna be honest, I was expecting a bigger one. It looks great. Don't get me wrong. Look at the the handle, the hilt. It's got like that flashing going on here. It's got the it's got the stuff like going through it. It's got the cold effect. Um, I love the handle here where it literally looks like an ice spike. Beautiful weapon, delightful weapon, but could be longer. Could be longer. Just going to point that out. Next is the Emerald of Bitter Wounds, which does have text. This gives you Boon of Undeath, which makes it so when you take damage, uh, you get the Inflict Light Wounds spell cast on you. I believe that this has no limit on it. So if you have extra green slots, you can probably slot in uh, more of these if you happen to be playing as a uh, Necromancer type character. And every time you get hit, you're taking a bunch of heals instead of damage. 
Very cool. Probably going to be good. So uh, you'll want to get a lot of these if you if you like playing negative energy characters. Next is the Magmatic Reaver, one of the best sounding weapons in the whole game. Just the name, Magmatic Reaver, sounds awesome. This is a great axe. This great axe is born of pure obsidian and commands fires of the earth. Dripping with magma is the obsidian weapon drips with magma on every swing. Your attacks have a high chance to deal very strong fire damage over time, which is, I believe, the magma legendary green steel effect. It has keen, so its base damage rating is very high. Armor piercing 34, which is great, and flame blit bitten, which also applies vulnerability. This weapon is not the best weapon in the game, but it has armor piercing on a weapon, which means that this is very good if you want to separate yourself from the part of the family set, uh, since, you know, it's going to be able to let you do something slightly different and change up your stats. How does it look? Woo! Alrighty. Okay. 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 Maybe you just should get it anyway. I think you should just get this weapon. Look at this weapon. Oh my god. Look at this. Oh. Come on. Go get one. Beautiful. I love the way this weapon looks. I like the colors. I like everything else. I kind of wish there was a little bit more red. It's made of obsidian, though, which makes sense. But I wish there was a little bit more red in some of these places. Like, this was a little bit more intense, but I like the purple cropping. I like the coloration of the the, the, the crystal on here. And kind of like, the it's kind of showing off, like, the shine. Especially when you get it with a lot of light. Um, where, in, when it's in the light, it really kind of starts to shine. I like that. That's a good-looking weapon. Moving on. Orange Augment. Dismagica. This adds Shadow Man tool to a weapon. Um, Shatter Mantle is a valueless effect. I can't imagine why you would use this. I'm closing this window. Next, it is the Raelia, the Frost Blade, a dagger. Now, important note, this is a special weapon. Just like the uh, Shadow Blades you saw before, which are Charisma to hit and damage, this is a Ice Blade, as opposed to a Force Blade, that deals cold damage. This is also a dagger, and it has Chilling, Ice Blast, Freezing Ice for the freeze, and it also has Vulnerability Stacking, a very, very valuable effect. It also has Frostblade, a blade made of pure ice, and is surprisingly light to the touch. It bypasses incorporeality chances of ethereal monsters innately. Um, it says wisdom to hit and damage. This is supposed to do uh, intelligence to hit and damage. So I believe that this is, in fact, a typo. It is incorrect. It is supposed to be intelligence to hit and damage on here, as opposed to wisdom. So I believe this is a typo. But two Rayali of the Frostblades could be possibly the new intelligence build for uh, Vistani Knife Fighters, um, among other different types of builds, and it could be very interesting. Intelligence Rogue may be coming back. Now, all-important question, how, unless this is not a typo and it's not fixed, but this is an intelligence weapon. Now, how does it look? Let's find out. Gotta click on somebody else. Okay. All right. I'm, uh, ooh, 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 ooh. It's kind of hard to see. It's in the corner there. But it's it's like got floating pieces. It's got like this almost like kind of like blue column here. It's hard to see perfectly because my character model is in the way. But, video, let me get close to this dagger. But, ooh, that is crisp. I like this dagger. It's very small. I love the fact that it has this like suspended sections. It's got like this dagger column. I really like the look and outline of this dagger. It is quite beautiful. And yes, monks can use it while being without being centered. You just need to make sure you have proficiency. I believe monks are proficient with daggers, but I'm not sure. Very good looking item. Next is Blood of Blossoms. This is a trinket for spring. This is the spring trinket. And this trinket is a... So spring set is a light DPS set oriented sort of thing. It gives enhanced key, wisdom, insightful wisdom, sheltering 55. This is, uh, without a doubt, a amazing monk item. This item is so amazing, I'm probably going to use this on my Flame Blade Ranger and put it in the final build guide. Is this item really, really good outside of monk? Honestly, even if you're playing as a wisdom-based character, wisdom and insightful wisdom sheltering is so good on one item. I can definitely recommend using this. The only downside is the eminence of spring, but if you want spring as a set, it could be good. So again, I'm going to go back and forth on this. I'm going to say that depending on how valuable Spring is, 
is going to determine how good this item is as a whole, how it fits into the marketplace of all the other different items out there and how you're going to want to you know budget whether you want to use this item or something else. That's the value of that spring set, I think, is what's going to matter the most. Right now, spring is the least complete set, I think. It's easier to get the other three sets than spring. Um, so this might help it out a little bit. But uh, either way, the Wisdom and Cypher Wisdom Sheltering is probably going to make it fit into a lot of character builds. Many character builds struggle with getting magic resistance rating. We've looked over builds in the build reviews recently that have been uh, wisdom-based builds missing magic resistance rating. This item solves a lot of those problems. So very, very, very strong. Uh, so again, this item, incredibly powerful. If you need Wisdom and Sheltering, this is a go-to must-have piece. Outside of that, um, if you can find those stats other places, you might not use this, and especially Eminence of Spring um, is going to hinge whether this is, becomes a more mainstay item, I will say. Moving on to Hearsome's Fiddle in the offhand. <clears throat> so, Hearsome's Fiddle, this is an orb. It is also Eminence of Spring, which is very interesting. And uh, it is Hearsome's, uh, it seems Hearsome's plot is foiled for now, but what if, instead of turning this over to the gatekeepers, you were to take this fiddle and use it as your own? Oh ho ho, delightfully devilish adventurer. I love that description. This item gives sounding, giving additional sonic damage on spell cast. Important note, this sonic damage scales off of your spell, or your, your sonic spell damage. Now there's two sounding items in the game. I don't know if both will work, but uh, sonic spell power does affect this. If you get both sounding items, this one, as well as the uh, necklace from the Fire of the Just, I don't know if they stack together. It's a great question. It is good luck five, the highest amount of good luck you can get in the game for plus five to all saves and skill checks. Insightful resonance, quality resonance, and inspiration of the Inferno. While this fiddle is equipped, you will use it to perform your bardic music, which is fantastic. In the offhand, again, this looks like a fiddle. This is, in fact, here's some fiddle. Um, you can already get one of these if, uh, by playing as a Typhling Scoundrel. You get a cosmetic fiddle. This is not a cosmetic. This is actually a real item. Uh, is this going to be good? Well, bard spellcasters got major buffs in this patch. Uh, this is only going to be good if Bard Spellcasters are good. If Bard Spellcasters are still bad, then this is going to be bad. However, Bard Spellcaster damage has been about doubled when they might have needed a triple or quadrupling. So we will see some testing is going to give the answer to that one. Either way, very cool item. Happy it's in the game. Next, we are looking at the Rauvin of the Frost. This is just like the dagger, but it's a longsword. Now, problematically, longswords are very good, so it's hard to say exactly where longsword is going to fit into the metagame right now, uh, or this longsword is going to fit in the longsword metagame. Right out of the gate, this longsword is not as good as the current one of the best one-handed, well, sorry, one of the best one-handed weapons in the entire game, the Soul Razor. Soul Razor is a little bit stronger than this because um, of some of its different powers. However, outside of Soul Razor, Raven of the Frost fits in pretty well. It doesn't have a lot of great competition and is pretty cool. A couple downsides, though. Again, since it does cold damage and not physical damage, you're kind of limited on some of the monsters that you have to fight. Anything immune to cold is going to be a problem with this weapon. So, and there's really no way to get cold immunity bypass. So making friends with a cold druid or cold sorcerer or alchemist is probably your best bet here. So it does have a limitation. It has the freezing ice built in, which is kind of nice, and it does a lot of damage. Again, I think this is also supposed to be intelligence to hit and damage. Normally going to be designed as some type of cool Eldritch Knight type weapon, but we will see. Big note, because the Frostblade can be used by monks, you can actually use this if you want to do dexterity to hit and damage if you play as a monk and you take Whirling Steel Strike, doing a dual wield longsword build in Ninja Spy. Horrible idea, and you shouldn't do it, but now you're thinking about it, and maybe you will. How's it look? Raven of the Frost, it's like the dagger, but it's a bit bigger. It's literally it. It's just like the dagger, but bigger. Again, I still think this weapon looks beautiful. I love the harsh lines. The really sharp cuts on the lines to me really make this weapon. I feel like if it didn't have these like jagged edges, it would be less interesting. Like there's some curvature here. You know, you can see the curvature in the actual handle, but the jagged edges for me really sell the design. I like the visuals of this and the glow. It's got a good glow on this weapon. Um... Yeah, just great. Uh, big fan of Rauvin of the Frost. Next item is the Change Stone. So the Change Stone is very, very interesting. It says uh, this trinket seems slightly different whenever you look at it. The Change Stone is very weird. From what I understand, this item randomly populates with different stats. So every time you get one from a raid, it has different stats. The first column, the first thing, is one of the main stats. Strength, Dex, Con, Intelligence, Wisdom, Charisma. The second column is either Double Shot, Double Strike, or Accuracy. The third column is Seeker, Deception, or Deadly. And the last column is Speed, Insightful, Deadly, and Insightful, Accuracy. And it's part of the Summer set. 
Now, this item fills out the Somerset so well, in fact, it actually makes it Somerset being a, or it turns Somerset into an easy to get set. Making you think, okay, well, if you can get Summer now easily with the Change Stone, you can actually fully and completely sub out um, whatever you were going to use, uh, like the, the part of the family set. This is problematic, though, because the Change Stone is different every single time. So getting the right Change Stone is going to drive you insane. This is going to be a very build around sort of item where if you get the right Change Stone with the right stats, then it makes your build work perfectly. And if you don't, you might not be able to make that character work. I don't know if this is good for DDO, but it's really cool. And the fact that there's all this variability is very interesting. It was pointed out by someone in chat that if a Change Stone dropped for everybody in every completion, it would still take a year to get one with the right combo of stats. Possibly. This is 6 times 3 times 3 times 3 different permutations of this item. Yeah, it's going to take a while. It's going to take a while. Very cool trinket, extremely powerful, and if you can get the right one, you're getting a 7-piece uh, summer set easily. Moving on. Helmet, Aspect of the Wild Hunt. This little wolf here. This one is part of summer as well. It has Teeth of Bone which grants uh, plus one W while in animal form or shifting, uh, plus 21 constitution, insightful double strike 11, elemental resistance 45. And if I put it on, I believe it should have a wolf visual. <gasps> Come on! Yeah! That is what I'm talking about, guys. That's what I'm talking about. Oof! Okay, whether or not this item is amazing, you better believe people are going to be glamoring this one. Okay? Also important note, the Con 21 is kind of weird, because it means that actually with your Somerset, you can probably even dump the Collective Sight and replace it with nothing, because there's still no goggles in the game. Is this item good? I don't know. Elemental Resist 45 is very handy to have as a passive. Insightful Double Strike can be hard to get on items. Con 21 is nice, and Teeth of Bone is only valuable if you're an animal. But goddamn, look at this item. Holy moly. The Ferocious Hood can only be mastered by those who have become one with their animalistic aspect. I love this item. Visually stunning. I'm a huge fan. Thank you, SSG, for putting this in the video game. Moving on. We now have Valorius the Flame Blade, a scimitar. Just like my Flame Blade build, which you haven't watched, which you should, but if you haven't yet, here's a link just in the top right corner of the stream right there. You can see, did I go the right way? Yeah, I did. Just over there. You'll be able to watch the uh, video and possibly the conclusion if I update it as well to go along with this. This is a, if you're playing as a Flame Blade build, this is the final item. You want to get two of these so that way you don't have to conjure them anymore. So you can actually take them, put them on and off whenever you need to. This is the best Flame Blade in the game. Is this a good weapon? No, but it is the best Flame Blade in the game. So if you're playing a Flame Blade build, you have to use this. The reason why I say it's not a good weapon, it deals fire damage, which means you need to have a way to bypass fire damage. Monsters with resistance will still resist all the damage that you deal to it. And uh, yeah. And also the cool fire immunity property and the extra double damage against cold creatures, among other things, uh, that effect is removed if you, for any reason, enchant it. So there are a lot of limitations to this weapon, but it is pretty cool. And of course, it looks like a flame blade. I think my thing is lagging. I, oh, there it is. It looks like a flame blade. Not too bad. Moving on. Bottled Rainstorm. This is the autumn set piece of gear. And this is what autumn needs. Now, problematically... This effect is unfortunate because it only gives power of frozen storms, which is uh, cold and electric spell power, which is kind of unfortunate. I was hoping for maybe some more things to engage with Autumn here, but at the end of the day, this is not the worst. Uh, guaranteeing fire resistance gives you quality, cold and electric, insightful, cold and electric, and then quenched, which makes your cold and lightning spells apply the debuff portion of quench with no save. Quench, of course, reduces monsters resistance to uh, electric damage, which is fantastic. Now, this item is probably going to be a must-have for any electric or cold caster, giving you so many insightful powers. And if you're already a caster, maybe Eminence of Autumn will be right for you, getting close to that 15% legendary bonus universal spell critical damage. This is actually a really good set. It's just hard to make it work. Uh, with Combining this with the nerfs that have come through on the uh, Ravenloft belts and changing those, you can now actually consider using the strap uh, or the winter, or sorry, the, the strap belt. I can't remember the name of it. Strap of Leaves, I think, for uh, as a artifact item for your belt. The artifact gives intelligence, which isn't always great, but it grants magic resistance rating, uh, which is really nice. And on top of that, it is a winter and autumn set, allowing you to really fill up some of those stats. Plus, combining with this, you can 
very easily get a three or four piece autumn in any caster set, which is pretty nice considering you can even get the 20 maximum spell power, spell points. This is going to be very powerful. Look forward to this item. I'm just kind of sad that it's only cold and electric. Hopefully we'll see some more spell power items uh, added to autumn or adjustments to autumn in the future uh, to make it a more caster friendly set for all types of casters. Moving on is Driftwood, the rune arm. Uh, Driftwood does Salt Shot, which is insanely powerful, really, 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 really high damage. However, it is uh, um, knife-based damage, so it does, uh, or it's based off of the uh, um, impulse spell power, which can be hard to come by. However, um, wait, where's Wicker Witch? Did they axe Wicker Witch? There's no Wicker Witch in this list, I just noticed. There was supposed to be a crossbow called Wicker Witch, which was going to be really cool to go with this, uh, but I don't see it. However, um, this gives Insightful Impulse, Quality Impulse, Magical or Natural Armor Bonus, and Corrosive Salt Guard, which means if you happen to have Wicker Witch, uh, or not Wicker Witch, a uh, Impulse item from somewhere else, such as the Titan Control Matrix or something else, um, you will be able to uh, get a lot of damage out of this as well. Plus there's Title Shot, which is uh, extra untyped damage and does double damage to fire creatures. Very cool Rune Arm. Probably going to be extremely good. Uh, the Salt Shot doesn't have a stun on it, but it's probably going to do a lot of single target damage. And lastly, on this preview, we have the last weapon, Miri, uh, Mirana of the Flame, a two-handed falchion version of the Flame Blade. Same complications as Flame Blade. However, it's a two-handed complication, which means if you wanted to play Flame Blade, I don't know, Barbarian? You could probably do that. Flame Blade Barbarian is going to look like this. And that weapon's not too bad. Overall, it's got a bit of a flange here. It looks pretty cool. It also seems like it has the core flame blade inside of it still, which is probably a visual bug. I don't really love the way that the fact that this extra flame blade just kind of sticks out of the other sword um, and follows along. But you might not notice it while you're actually playing around, but sitting here watching it in town, it doesn't look as impressive as I wanted it to. I think the core weapon is fine. I just think the fact that the other flame blade is still lodging out of it is not great. Wisdom to hit and damage a bug? No, this is a flame blade. It uses wisdom to hit and damage. That is correct. Yeah, if you follow along with my Wisdom Barbarian build, which if you want to, I'll just put a link up there if you want to check out the Wisdom Barb build. Sure, you can use this as a final weapon. You can't bypass fire immunity, but that's going to be a problem. That's, you know, that's fine. Anyways, that is all for the item review. So thank you for watching. If you want to see more item reviews from future packs, make sure you leave a comment and say, I really want to see item reviews. And if you don't post more item reviews, I'll be disappointed and I won't be able to watch your videos on the channel anymore because really that's one of the things I do want to see. It would be great. And honestly, I like it. I don't always watch the whole thing. Sometimes I watch part of it, maybe come back to it in two different pieces because it's like 20, 25 minutes of content. And you know, it's nice on the walk to work or sometimes when I'm just having a lull, maybe when I'm just doing something else, uh, you know, it's nice. Maybe put it on while I'm you know, in the kitchen making dinner, and uh, it's just nice to have in the background. Please leave that as a comment if you'd like to see more, and if you don't, uh, I don't want to hear that. Anyways, uh, see you on the next thing about Lemania. This patch is going to be big, big, big. Anyway, that's my video. That's it. Can I test Druid spell damage? Yeah, probably. Cool. All right, there we go. Two, two YouTube video so far. How